One of the things that I think all the parties are deliberately very quiet on is Brexit. And I don't hear anything from any party about potentially a U-turn, customs union, single union, about actually turning back the clock because polling shows that the majority of people realise it's been an absolute disaster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I cannot understand why politicians... <laughs> You should be brave, admit there's been a mistake and how they would remedy it. And I think both the main political parties at Westminster, Conservatives and Labour, are very, very quiet in this, and I think it's shocking. Okay, well, it's you, can't be, you can't be quiet, yes, you can't be quiet forever on this. Craig Hoy, you're hearing from a corporate banker there who says that this has been a massive problem. And indeed, you know, for businesses, you know, getting supplies, getting, getting, uh, for example, logistics, it's created a lot of problems for people. Do you accept that? <clears throat> I would accept that there's been quite a lot of tumult in uh, the business problems. and operating environment and problems over the last three years. Which of those relate directly to Brexit and which of those relate to the COVID pandemic is not entirely sure. Yeah. But there is, but there is, no, but, 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 but to make that point, the, but the UK, the, the GDP. But, but, but Hang on, the, let, let me I just, let me the, just pick up, because I don't think the microphone picked up. The, 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 the gentleman there says Goldman that Goldman Sachs, Sachs have come out and said 5% reduction 5%. in GDP. That also impinges upon the cost of living crisis. That compounds the problem. It's been a UK households are worse off because of Brexit. Yeah. Well, let me just pick up, uh, can I bring the microphone to the front here, please, just because on that question, I want to come back to the panel, but a quick comment. Yeah, um, and Kyle will agree with the point about Brexit. Um, and perhaps uh, Craig can cite to the benefits benefits, but. Well, look, I think one of, one of the benefits was during COVID, the fact that we managed to uh, acquire and develop so much of the vaccine and roll it out That's here in the United Kingdom. That's not true. That is true. We, we were in part of the EU programme. The UK innovated. It was the better best of British science innovation that we developed the, uh, the vaccine. It was the best of British trade and diplomacy that we acquired so much, not just for ourselves, but for the developing world. The European and it was Union the best of British science, the vaccine best at of the British same logistics, level John, as we did. Best of British logistics and our NHS that meant that we rolled that out. Sorry, no, can no, I, because no, I've, yeah, let, 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 because I've still got the microphone, I think that is a dubious claim that's been seriously challenged. Can you give us another one? Well, I think, for example, we're now joining the Trans-Pacific Partnership, looking at rapidly growing markets in the Asia-Pacific region, Latin America, which we can now export to. I was talking, I was, I was just, I was, well, actually, you want to pull out the biggest market on the doorstep, which is the rest of the UK, Patrick. Uh, the, that is an opportunity that we can but seize to export to global is, markets, and it's something that the UK government... this is very interesting for a town like Paisley to, 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 to conjure with, because because Paisley, of course, has always looked outwards in the world because of its huge, uh, it, its huge industry in the Industrial Revolution. So, can we just get a sense of how people uh, feel uh, about that? Now, the woman here in blue, you had your hand up. Let me just check what uh, you would like to say. We're going to get a microphone to you just as quickly as we can. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, my name is Marie. I'm a civil servant, and I'm also. Uh, local activist. Mm -hmm. uh, just to Mr Hoy, when you said about Brexit being um, a benefit to us because of the vaccine, what about the obscene amount of money that these companies are making now as a result of COVID and afterwards? The money is going to them, it's not going back into the taxpayers' coffers. Okay. I think Fundamentally, we looked to cooperate with the private sector. The UK government worked with the private sector to develop that vaccine, and that vaccine went all around the world. So that was something that we achieved here in the United Kingdom to develop the vaccine that helped out uh, many, many parts of the world, including the... Sure. Including but the, wait, the no, 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 let me just bring away to Chamberlain, please. Yeah, so, I mean, it's interesting, Craig, saying that when he's talking about the CTPPP, when I know farmers in my constituency who can't get staff to pick uh, fruit and vegetables in the fields, uh, who are finding themselves clobbered by the trade deals that the UK government has ha has uh, managed and not seeing any benefit to it at all. And actually, a number of the topics that have been picked up this, this, uh, this evening, NHS, staffing issues, um, uh, wage requirements, um, education where there's shortages uh, across the piece. And I think the problem is, is that we've ended up with a Brexit that's been a slow puncture in some respects. And as a result, it's been covered up by other things. But, but you know, I find it interesting that nobody thinks in Parliament that actually Brexit well, is well, going well, even the Brexiteers. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Before, before we actually just leave, leave Brexit, let's just see what change would a Labour government make to a Brexit settlement? 
Well, fundamentally, it's about resetting the the relationships with what Europe. Does that because, mean? well, it, it means on things like, for example, Customs we've been union? talking around. Can you just? Because the point about Brexit is that, of course, we were led into it by a Conservative Party in absolute chaos. And the difference is, we, we, it's difficult to separate out the economic chaos of the Conservative Party from Brexit. We've had 14 years of this. The bit that Craig conveniently misses out when he talks about the last few years is Liz Truss's catastrophic budget, which almost crashed the economy. Which so the difference, so, so what we would say Ukraine is... Also, also had a, a okay. role so there's been a number of factors. The difference is we have right on our borders that a really important trading partner. We need to rebuild those relationships in a serious way. Right. We've not had that. Okay, well, why don't we let me know something about Brexit? Because I haven't said anything about Brexit and the Scottish National Party has consistently opposed Brexit. Now, I agree with everything Wendy said, except, of course, remember that her leader said we are not a rejoin party. So the Lib Dems aren't in favour of it. We know that Craig's party is responsible for Brexit. And the Labour Party... And the Labour Party... And the Labour Party... And the Labour Party... The Labour Party is not in favour of rejoining either. Right. Let's move on now.